Here is another free video from IT Free Training. In the last video, I looked at how to back up your computer system to protect you from data loss. This allows you to recover your documents, but what happens if your hardware fails or your computer is lost or stolen? In this video, I will look at doing a full restore of Windows 7 onto different hardware. If your hard disk fails, you can replace it, but if your computer is lost or stolen, then it is unlikely the replacement computer will have the same hardware as the old computer. When you restore a computer from a backup to different hardware, it is called a bare metal restore. In the old days, if you restored your computer from a backup to a computer with different hardware, it was a very risky procedure. The new computer could blue screen or crash on boot. A lot of time was needed to troubleshoot the new computer to get it to work, so oftentimes a fresh install needed to be performed. A fresh install would mean that all your applications would need to be installed again. Windows 7 has improved the ability to perform a bare metal install. When you restore Windows to different hardware, any changes to the hardware are detected and Windows attempts to install a driver for that hardware. Hopefully, Windows has a device driver for all the hardware in the new computer. If no device driver can be found, the operating system should still boot and allow you to install the missing device drivers. I will now change to my Windows 7 computer to look at how to perform a full restore of Windows 7 using backup and restore onto a computer with different hardware. First of all, I will open the control panel and select System and Security, and then select Backup and Restore. In the last video, I went into a lot of detail about how to use Backup and Restore. In this video, I will perform a quick backup to the network so I have a backup to use to recover the system later. For more information about Backup and Restore, see the last video. Select Setup Backup to start the backup wizard. Once the wizard has started, select the option Save on Network. All I need to do now is enter in the share name and a username and password that has access to this share. On the next screen, you can decide to let Windows determine the settings to use or choose your own. In this case, I will choose my own because I want to change one of the default values. On the next screen, I will leave it on the default values to back up the data files on the system. At the bottom of the screen, I will deselect the option Include a System Image of Drives. You could include this in the backup, but I have deselected it so I can show you how to perform this step manually. On the last screen, I will save the settings and run the backup. This backup will only backup the data files and does not include the system files. This means if the hard disk were to crash on this computer, I would have to reinstall the operating system from scratch. Even though I have not included a system image in the backup, it will still take a long time to run, so I will pause the video and return shortly. The backup of the data files is complete, but does not include the system files. A system image backup is quite large and takes a while to complete. On a system in which you do not regularly install applications or make system changes, you may decide to manually run a system image backup when one is required. Since I am backing up to the network, Windows Backup and Restore can only support one system image at a time. In order to support more, it requires some features of NTFS that are not available when connecting via the network. If you were to have a locally connected hard disk formatted with NTFS, Backup and Restore could support more backups, giving you a backup history. Also, since the backup is not replaced each time, performing a system image backup should run faster than running one to the network. To manually run a system backup, select the option at the top left, Create a System Image, to launch the wizard. Like the backup wizard, I have the choice of where to store the backup. In this case, I will store the backup on the network. You could select the same network location where the files and folder backup was stored. Both can be stored in the same location without an issue. The system image copies all files on the hard disk, including system files, and thus takes a long time to complete. So once again, I will pause the video and return shortly.
Once the system image has been created, Windows will ask you if you want to create a system repair disk. You can use this system repair disk to boot Windows and recover the operating system. In this case, I will not create a system repair disk so that I can show you how to perform this step manually. If you have a Windows 7 setup DVD, you could also use this to boot the system and recover the system. To manually create a system repair disk, select the option on the left hand side, Create a System Repair Disk. The system repair disk also contains tools that may help you recover a Windows system that is having problems. For example, if the master boot record were to become corrupt, you could use the system repair disk to create a new one. Since the system repair disk will be used to boot the computer, it needs to be stored on an optic disk. Remember that the repair disk is not tied to the backup in any way, so you could create one repair disk and use the system repair disk on many computers. I will once again pause the video and return when the process is complete. Windows simply asks that this disk be labeled and it is ready to go. I will remove the system repair disk from this computer and switch it off to simulate an unrecoverable hard disk crash. I will now start up another computer with different hardware with the system repair disk that I just created in the DVD drive. The system recovery disk will boot Windows PE, a small bootable version of Windows, and auto launch the system recovery tool. Once I have selected my keyboard type, I will be taken to the next screen of the wizard where I can choose to run the recovery tools or restore Windows from a system image. I will leave it on the setting Restore Your Computer Using a System Image that you created earlier. Notice at the bottom the Load Drivers button. If you need to load additional drivers to read your hard disk, like for RAID drives or for network adapters, you can do this here. Once I press Next, the local hard disks will be checked to see if there is a recovery image. Since this is new hardware, no recovery image will be found. In this case, I want to use the recovery image I saved on the network, so I will cancel out of here and then use the next option, Select a System Image, to choose the image on the network. Any system images that were found will be shown here, including any images that are on a connected optical drive. To select a network image, Press the button Advanced. This will give you the option to select an image from the network. You also get the option to install additional drivers if you need to in order to access the network. Once I select the option Search for a system image on the network, I will be given a confirmation dialog asking if I want to connect to the network. By default, the network is not started up for security reasons. Once the network has started, I can enter in the share name that is holding my system image and I will then be prompted for the username and password for that share. Once connected to the share, I will be prompted for which system image I want to use. Once I select the system image, I will be asked which image inside the system image I want to use. System image files can contain multiple system images. The VHD file the system image is stored in contains a single instance store. This means that when the same file is stored multiple times in the same system image, the other image can reference the one file rather than making duplicates of the same file. In this case, more than one image is not supported when the system image is saved to the network and thus I have only one and will only ever have one image to choose from. If this image were saved to a local hard disk, it is possible that multiple images would be listed here. On the next screen of the wizard, I have the option to exclude disks. In some cases, you may have a data disk that you do not wish to recover using the system image. In this case, I only have the one hard disk, so I will cancel out of here. If I select the advanced option, I will be given two options. The option automatically restart this computer after the restore is complete will reboot the computer once done. Since the restore takes a long time to complete, it is a good idea to leave this option on. This means that once the restore is complete, 
Windows will automatically start and will detect the changed hardware and reinstall the drivers. The next option, Automatically Check and Update Disk Error Information, will check the hard disks for errors. This does increase the time the restore takes to complete, but given that the restore does take a long time to complete anyway, I will leave this option on as it will not increase the time the backup takes to complete by that much. Once I leave this screen and press Next, I will move on to the final screen of the wizard. Once I press Finish, I will be given a final dialog confirming that everything on the hard disk will be erased and do I wish to proceed. Once I press Yes, the system image will be copied over the network, replacing everything on the local hard disk. The process does take a long time to complete, so I will pause the video and return when the process is completed. Once the system image has finished being copied to the hard disk, Windows will boot. During this process, Windows will scan for new hardware and install drivers for that hardware if it has them. Because of this, the first boot may take longer than normal. When you first log in, you may notice that Windows is still installing drivers and may ask for a reboot to complete the process. Once the system is booted and I have logged in, I will check for missing drivers by opening Computer Management. I do this by right-clicking on my computer and selecting Manage. From here, select Device Manager and check for missing drivers. Hopefully Windows will install all the drivers that you need, but when changing hardware you can never be too sure and it pays to check. You may also want to update the drivers to the latest version. The manufacturer of your computer may have provided additional software and drivers that need to be installed. This is particularly the case with laptops. It is a good idea to check for additional software disks provided by the manufacturer and install this software. A system image restore will restore all data and files on the computer but there are also changes that were backed up since this system image was created. To restore those files, open the control panel and select System and Security, and then select Backup and Restore. To restore my users' files, I will select the option at the bottom, Restore All Users' Files. From here, I need to select which files to restore and from which backup. In this case, I will select Browse for Folders. I have only performed one backup, so I can select this backup and press Add Folders to add all the files and folders from that backup. Once I press Next, I will be asked if I want to restore the files in the same location or a different location. Since I am doing a complete PC restore, I will leave it on the default location and move on. Since the files already exist from the system image backup, I will get a dialog asking me if I want to overwrite existing files. In this case, I do, as this backup contains the most recent data. There are not too many files in this backup, so the restore will not take too long. Once the restore is complete, you will notice that some of the files could not be restored. If I select the option View Log Files, I can see which files were not restored. Most of these files will not be restored because the file is already in use and the backup software could not overwrite with the other file. One way to get around this is to log in as another user and perform the restore with that user. That's it for performing a system image recovery on different hardware. In the next video, I will look at some of the other options you can use to recover your computer system. For example, Let's say you install a device driver that causes your system to blue screen. Restoring the system from a system image will correct this, but this is a drastic and time-consuming step. In the next video, I will look at some faster ways to recover from problems like this without having to restore the whole operating system. For the rest of this free training series, please see our webpage or YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.